Last week I started talking about why are we talking about prayer. You know, it's, it's very difficult to go through so many things in prayer that we went through last week, but we're continuing this. Uh, I can't even begin to preach enough of a sermon about prayer, how important it is. Um, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord. I just pray right now that you would be with your people. Father, we give you this service, the remainder of it to you. Let your Holy Spirit do the work, not us. Lord, let it be all about you and nothing about us other than humbling ourselves to you and hearing your word and obeying. We pray this in your precious name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 So we left off with Mark 11, chapter, or chapter 11, verses 22 and 24. So I'm going to reread that. It said, And Jesus answered unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. I think there's something that's important and a key in this besides just what you think it says. I desire Christ more than I desire something else. It has to be one of our prayers. I want you more than I want anything else. See, then it helps keep us focused on what's really important, right? Because when he's first in our lives, then everything else begins to come, fall into place. So if God's the head of the, me, God's ahead of my wife and my kids, he's ahead of the home. Then my wife, then my kids, then the church, my work, all those other things go down in line. But I will not be like other pastors that put their church before they put everything else. My family is just as important to me as your family is to you. Amen. Including this family. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if I'm not right in my priorities, how can I ever expect you to be right in yours? Oh, true. Pastors are also, we are also the ones that show example of what should be done. That does not mean we do a great job at that. That does not mean you do a great job of that as a father or a head of the home or a wife to the husband or, or a child to the parent or the parent to the child. That doesn't mean we always do a great job. We fail in that area, don't we? But that doesn't mean that you're a failure. Because you fail does not mean you're a failure. Some people just give up and say, well, I've lost hope. I just can't make it work. Yeah. What are you talking about? Christ could have said, when, when, they, when all those disciples that came up to him and said, your teaching is too hard. I can't follow it. It's too hard. He could have just threw his hands up and said, I give up. Yeah. Couldn't he? He could have easily done that. Gotten discouraged. How many gets discouraged sometimes? <laughs> right? We get discouraged and we... Like, kick the can, man. We're out of there. Suck rocks. But the problem is, God doesn't give up on us. Why do we give up so easily when God calls us to do something that's difficult? Yeah. We try and do it on our own instead of letting Him do it. It's difficult because we make it more difficult than it has to be. Because when we start doing something and we're praying that God does something in our lives, what do we need to do? I relinquish my rights to the outcome to you. We have to focus on the process and not worry about the outcome, what the end is, because it's in his hands after all, isn't it? So, Becky, it's not your responsibility how your kids, how they end up, if you're dead and gone, all you can do is do what you are to do the best of the ability that you have, right? Yeah. We're to train our kids 
to do right yep. and do follow the word and all these things. Jerry, there's times you shook your head and said, I didn't train him that way, is there? <laughs> yes, that's right. And there's times that you've beat your head on the wall and go, I never raised my girls to be that way, right? Yes, several times. <laughs> like I said, the obligation for the outcome is not your responsibility. Your obligation is to love them unconditionally yeah. and continue to pray for them and be the example that you need to be in their lives. Right. It's not our responsibility how they turn out. Don, I'm sure there's days that Larry made you frustrated. Pulled Well, you pulled your hair out. So. Well, <laughs> yeah, we know why. Well, she, beat, she, beat <laughs> she beat him to it. <laughs> But there's days, I'm sure everybody has those days when something is so frustrating and infuriating that you just can't focus on what's going on. That's right. You know what you need to do at that moment? Take a deep breath. Yeah. And say, Father, it's not my responsibility for the outcome. It's my responsibility to be faithful to it. That's right. Faithful to you. Yeah. And when we start putting the priority right back and you pray that prayer and make him the priority, yeah. then the rest begins to start to fall into place. I've done it so many times. How many of you have ever tried to put something back together you took apart and you couldn't quite figure out how you did it, right? <laughs> right? We've all done that, right? And then you just throw it away and go buy a new one, right? I've done that. Do I have to admit it? <laughs> yeah. Four or five hundred dollars down the road. <laughs> but if we would have just been patient, right? What I do now a lot is I put the, the first thing I take out, off to the furthest way away yeah. and then I put it in line going back to when I go to put it back together then that first thing will be the first thing I do and then the next one and then the next one I learned that because of so many times a manual doesn't always tell you about this dumb little part or this dumb little gasket or any of that sometimes okay. it doesn't tell you that right and you get mad or this this snap ring is not actually a snap ring. It's a, it's a wire or whatever, you know. It's just, it's all screwed up how it happens. So I've learned that I have to be patient and follow the process, right? Okay. Well, God asks us to be patient and follow the example of Christ in the process of our regeneration. Yes. It's a walk. Yep. Christ said, as an example... Pray what is you want, you shall have it. Yeah. But if your priorities are wrong, you can't have it. Because right. he has to be at the center of your priority. That's right. Right? Yeah. Refocus is important as prayer. How do you know that sometimes when you pray, you feel like you're talking to no one and nobody's listening? <laughs> yeah. Be honest. Let's be honest. With There's times that we feel that way. Yeah. God, are you even listening to a word I'm saying? Did you not hear anything? And then you go all day thinking God didn't hear you. Or you're frustrated because you feel like your prayers aren't getting through. Yeah. That's when he's hearing you the most. Yeah. At your most frustrated moment. And God gives answers. We just have to look for them. To our prayers. And don't you feel humble when you see the answer... You realize he'd been working on it for months ahead of time. Yeah, before exactly. you knew you needed it. I'm going to talk about persistence of prayer, how important this is. I'm going to give you an example that Christ gave you. If we look at Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not faint. I mean, don't give up. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me for mine, from mine am, am, uh, adversary. And he would not for a while, but after he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, 
which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. This lady was relentless. How many of you have a kid that kept coming and asking for something over and over and over and over and over? Finally, you give in, right? You just want them to shut up. Let's be honest, right, Jerry? You've done it too, don't, don't say you haven't. Not me. Just Jerry used to tell me, or Jerry tells me, I always said the answer is no. Now, what do you want? That's right. <laughs> yeah. I've said that to my kids, and they're like, that's no fair. <laughs> Until I hear yes from her, the answer is no, guy. <laughs> <laughs> but this lady was relentless. She didn't give up. She kept pursuing this guy, right? He finally had to just say, I'm going to give in just so she'll shut up and leave me alone, right? See, God, uh, Jesus is using this as an example. Why are you shutting up? You shouldn't shut up with the Father. Right. right? You shouldn't shut up. You should continually be seeking the Father, right? You should continue to be going to the Father in heaven. How many know we give up before we get our answers sometimes? Yeah, we do. Uh -huh. Right? We just walk away. Well, I left it in God's hands. Oh, well. No big deal. Yep. Come on, nobody's ever done that. Yes. I know I have. I've walked away. But then there's been times that I was, was pouring out to God and I wouldn't give up. Yeah. Ten years Marcy and I were in the desert before we found this church. Yeah. Ten years. Walked a desert journey in a church that was a dead end to us. We knew that God wanted us to do something more than what we were doing there. Absolute dead end. And that's nothing against the people in that church. We love them to death. Yeah. And, and, but for us, there was not a future. Yeah. We were persistent in our prayer. Yeah. Oh, there was times where things got okay and we quit praying a little bit here and there. Got comfortable. How many know comfortable is not a good thing sometimes, yeah, it's true. right? How many know that when we get comfortable, we get complacent? Yeah. When we get complacent, we don't we don't worry about things or we're not worry. We are concerned where we should be. Yeah. Kind of lulled to sleep about things. Or maybe sometimes when you're in that situation where you're like is it even doing any good? I see no results. Ten years, let me explain yeah. to you. Ten years. We saw no fruit. But all we had to do is look in the mirror because God was creating the fruit that he wanted for where he was going to plant us. Yeah. Amen. That's it. And little did we know we would, be, when we get here, we would be put on a journey that we never thought would ever happen in our Ooh. lives. Yeah. Total sideways from what we were doing. Yep. We thought God wanted. Walked a very lonely journey through that with Marcy and I and the kids with sickness. Yep. I never thought that would have ever happened. I thought when I get old. Yeah. My kids say I am old, so I guess I'm old. No, you're not. Perspective. But the problem was is that I wasn't, I said, God, whatever it takes, make me what you want me to be. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Those are words that you can regret sometimes. Yeah, okay. you know, the worst bull ride you ever had in your life. I do not regret a thing that Marcy and I went through. Let me, let me explain what I'm saying. I will never want to take back everything we've learned and walked through together. Yeah. It gave me a marriage that is stronger than it's ever been before, and it was strong. Yeah. Gave me a love and compassion for my wife and for people that I never had before. Yeah. I had compassion, but I never felt it like I do now. When people are in our plight, I want to ball sometimes and weep because I understand what it's like to be in their situation, maybe not that exact, but I understand when you're not knowing where to turn, what to do, whatever. I know those things. And to live it in a public way, it was even harder. Yeah. 
People have asked me, what do you need? I don't know. Just pray. Yeah. What What do you say to somebody? And you know, you, you don't even know where you're suffering. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just need God to intervene. That's all I can do. Yeah. And you guys were faithful and you prayed. And you loved us through it. You guys fed us. You took care of us. Even through it, slid some finances to us. We were so grateful. God blessed us through the hardest days and he's still blessing us. Yeah. But none of it was possible without prayer, a prayer life. How many know it's mean, important? A prayer it life. Is important. Jerry, you couldn't have made it through your journey with your <laughs> wife without prayer. True. true. It got stripped down to the only thing you could do was pray. Yeah. That's you right. couldn't even hardly have time to read your Bible. Hmm. But you sure could call upon the name of the Lord. Good. Right? Yeah, right. See, prayer is a key of persistence. And you want to see your babies changed? Persistently, don't give up. Right. Pray for them daily. Love yeah. them consistently. Yeah. And, and don't judge them, but give them a little tough love sometimes. Yeah. Right? It's hard. I'm, I'm yeah, giving you no, some no, advice no, out of my heart. Is that we have to sometimes do things we don't feel we want to because we love them so much we can't let our compassion get past our, emo our make us emotional instead of being truth. Yeah. Okay, we're grounded and anchored in Christ. Yeah. Christ gave everything he had, but he would not compromise his stance just to make them happy. He didn't compromise his stance with the Father, did he? No. He corrected people. In fact, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes all got their rear ends chewed several times. Ye who know the truth, but have no truth in you. How I many know Christ said that to him? He chewed him out, right? Yeah. Why did he do that? Because he loved him, but he was being a tough love. Mm -hmm. Tough love is hard to do. Tough prayers are hard to do. My mama wouldn't have said, Jesus, whatever it takes, bring him back to you. I wouldn't be standing here. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. My mom had to do tough love prayer. Whatever it takes, Jesus, bring him back to you. Yeah. Tough love. Yeah. You, you guys never got to meet my mama. You would have loved her to death. But she was full of tough love, and she'd tell you just how it was. And if you didn't like it, oh well. She was a mouthy broad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she'd flat out tell you how it is she don't care if you liked it but she always did it in love Yeah. never did it in a way that she left you hanging and felt like you weren't cared about or loved because yeah. then she'd always follow it up and she said but I love you and it doesn't matter if I'm disappointed in you today I still love you Yeah. no matter what you did or no matter what the situation was, she always made sure she reinforced there was love. That's why she said it. Yep. How many know sometimes some things just need to be said? Yes. Yeah. But there's a good way to say them, and then there's a bad way to say them. Yeah. Right? If you have a kid that's being a pain in the rear, you better knock it off or I'm going to blister your butt. Right? That's a good way to say it. There's times we were just in a store the other day. This kid was whining and crying. My wife said, man, I would blister his butt. Just like that when she walked away. <laughs> she was mad. Because sometimes the truth hurts, doesn't it? it does. So when we read the Bible and Christ says, you know, we must pray or he's directing us and guiding us, is that always fun to know that you don't measure up? Yeah. It hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. We never want to make it to a point where somebody in our life that we're correcting or talking to about something hard, that they don't measure up or are not good enough for your love. Yeah. Because Christ never did that. He nope. never said you weren't good enough for my love. He said, this is why I came. Right. To set, to heal a broken heart and to set the captive free, right? To make what was wrong right. Mm -hmm. 
that's the gist of what he said. I'm just clarifying. Prayer was the key. Persistence. When we're persistent in something, when I was reluctant in my first beginnings of relationship with my wife, I wasn't persistent enough to make my intentions known before I, we got engaged. Never kissed that woman or held her hand or nothing until the day we got engaged. Oh. Never dated as boyfriend or girlfriend or none of that. And, but she was my best friend. We did a lot of things together with all kinds of people. She was my youth assistant. She helped me in the youth group. And she loved me, but didn't know how to convey to me. Yeah. How many you know that's hard to convey your feelings sometimes? Sometimes it is. Right? See, Christ didn't have a problem telling us how he loved us, did he? No. No. Still to this day, it's the greatest love story that was ever written. And it's written with love and with blood. His blood. Yeah on our hearts. And I had to learn to be persistent with my pursuit of Marcy to get her attention. She told me she was going to move and I said, no, you can't. She said, yes, I can. Don't you tell me what I'm going to do, you jerk. <laughs> She's smiling back there because she remembers. And I went home and I told my mom and dad, I said, she can't move, she can't do that. She's part of the youth. And, and they're like, just tell her how you feel, you dummy. And I said, what are you talking about? My mom says, just tell her you love her, you idiot. I didn't want to hear that. I don't love her. <laughs> Three days later, I called her up and I said, are you home? She goes, yep. I said, don't go nowhere. And I had a, you remember those big old flip phone, cell phone things? Yeah. I had one of them. The brick. And I, I called her up, and I was on almost around the corner, and she, <laughs> she's hung up. She started running out the door with her keys to get in her car, and I pulled up right behind her car. <laughs> Got down on my knee, right then and there, and asked her to marry me. Never kissed her, never told her I loved her, nothing. I said, I, I love you, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you be my wife? She goes, maybe. <laughs> Talk about crushing a guy's spirit, man. I'll tell you. Maybe. But my persistence paid off. I'm 24 years into it and I'm excited. There you go. Amen. <laughs> this September will be 24 years, and this October will be five years as the pastor of this church. Wow. Time has flown, hasn't it? Yeah, when you're having fun. How are we to be like the widow in this story? Never give up on your requests to the Father. Be persistent and purposeful in your prayer. Persistence pays. How many know persistence pays? Yes. Robin, you wouldn't be married if you weren't a little persistent with her. Well, she was chasing me, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a beautiful love story that never should have been because they didn't want it, but it became. Amen? Amen. God had different plans. Yes, he did. And it's good. How much different is God from this unjust judge? God does love you. Yeah. He does care about you, and he doesn't want you to shut up. He wants to help you. Yeah. He's not doing it just so you'll shut up. He's doing it because he has compassion and he loves you. And one of his babies are asking him for something. Yeah. Come on. How many know when my daughter, okay, my daughter, when she wants something, I know I'm getting set up. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> the rest of the time it's dad yeah. but I know I'm getting set up 
And Marcy watches it. She's like, he's going to give in like a heart in a heartbeat because she uses that daddy word. And I just start melting because daddy is a, that's a special word for me because that's my bug. Her name's Boogie, her nickname. And I go, that's my bug. And, and she's just melts my heart. Marcy knows she's wrapped her, she has me wrapped. And I love that girl very much. Drives me nuts though. But I love her. But she's persistent. She doesn't stop. And the father's love can't say no. Come on. I mean, know that. Yeah, 12 words. You have a baby girl. I got a baby girl. You got two baby girls. You got two sons. But they melt mom's heart. <laughs> you got one of each, Don. You got several. <laughs> you guys got several. You got several daughter-in-laws. <laughs> but it melts your heart when you hear the word what? Daddy. I'm only speaking from a guy's point. Daddy melts my heart. And it's hard for me to say no. And when my one of my babies is hurting, I want to grab them and hold them. Come on. You know, yeah. when they're going through a hard time, what do you want to do? You just, Even though they're adults, I want to hold them and not let them go. Yeah. And I pray over them. Yeah. Let them know how much I love them. But I gave them to the one I love the most. Mm -hmm. That's the Father in the heaven. Yeah. See, I'm persistent in the thought that if God gives me breath and ability to bless my child, I'll do whatever I can. Yeah. As much as I can until I have to say no. Saying no is the hardest thing to do. But sometimes it's the most necessary thing to do. Prayer, but see with God, it's yay and amen. Yeah. That doesn't mean it'll be answered the way you want it. <laughs> it means not my will, but your will be done, Father as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, right? Yeah. So when we see that Christ was there, he was there. 11, 5 through 13, Luke 11, 5 through 13 says, And he said to them, Which of you have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come from a church, a, on a journey and have nothing to eat before him. I have nothing to put to eat before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise and give you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Yeah. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And he who knocks, will be, it will be opened for him. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, be an evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, who have, how much more will your heavenly Father give to the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? There's a key there. Did you hear the key? Persistence gets a response. Persistence gets a response. How do you think debt collectors get the debt paid? Persistence gets a response. Just to shut them up. Get them out of my hair, right? I'm going to pay them. So you agree to whatever they ask just so they'll shut up and leave you alone. Nobody's ever heard that before? Come on. Right? Yeah. What do you think's happening right now? These rioters, peaceful protesters, 
are whining the most. And what are they doing? They're appeasing them to shut them up. How many believe I'm telling a lie? You're true. No, you're not. How many know that that's the truth? That the is squeaky true. wheel always gets the grease, right? That's right. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah. You're right. So if you got a wheel bearing going out, you got to replace the wheel bearing, right? Or you got to fix it. Better do it. Well, sometimes they just throw money at it to fix the problem, and that doesn't fix the problem. It just makes it brew more, right? right. Well, then I can grind more, and I can get more, and yeah. they'll shut me up. How many know when you bribe your kids to do their their stuff and you pay them to do it, you're teaching them that you're not going to do anything done until you pay them to do it? Yes. How many's made that mistake? I have. Yeah. See, in my house where I lived when I was a kid, the expectations were you get your work done, and we'll talk about the money later. Yeah. Money was always available for whenever I needed it, if I needed it, yeah. within reason. It was not an issue about that. It's like, it's a respect issue. If I ask you to do something, you do what you're asked to do, and then we'll talk about the reward. Amen. Instead of bribing, my dad taught me that you must do, and then he'll decide the reward. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah. But see, the father does the same thing. Yeah. He asks you to do the work. Come on, praying. You know, ask you to do the work, and he decides what the reward is. Yeah. Yeah. Some truth there, isn't there? There is. So the obligation of the outcome is not your responsibility, it's your obligation to be persistent, and it's his obligation to answer you as he sees fit. That's right. He's obligated by his word to answer. Yeah. So you should know going into this, and I'm informing you, and I'm going to shut it down here in a few minutes, is you got to know when you're persistent, you know that God is obligated by his word to give you an answer. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's to give you what you want. Right. It's to give you what you need. Yeah. Sometimes he wants to give us patience, oh, long-suffering, Lord. Who, Pastor, why are you talking like that? That's true. But if we need it, we should pray for it. Yeah. Right? How many agree if we need something, we need to pray for it, right? That's right. If you need patience, you need to pray for it. That's right. How many times have you had to pray that, and let's be honest, we've all done this, there's somebody that just irritates the living garbage out of us. God, help me make it through that one hour that i got to be with them, please. You plead with him, right? Yeah. Give me patience. Give me, give me the kindness and meekness that I need because, God, I can't do it on my own because I'm not going to put up with nothing if you don't help me. Okay. I've been there. Yeah. God, my words, Lord, I'll try to avoid as much as possible. You walk through the door, door the first thing that person does, they walk right up to you. Yeah. Mm. Why? Lord, you didn't answer my prayer. Yeah, I did. You just didn't like the answer. Yeah, patience. <laughs> That's not always fun to get that kind of answer. But what he's teaching you is humility and the asking of the process. See, the process is the most important thing you'll go through. In our walk with Christ, it's the journey that is the biggest gift, not just the forgiveness, but the journey is one of the biggest gifts in the process of learning to depend on Him. And the reward for your faithfulness in that process is to get to spend it with Him forevermore. You get to spend time with Him forevermore. And guess what? He has streets of gold. We don't have any streets paved with gold. It cost a lot of gold to pave it with what they got. Mm -hmm. like gold. But they can't lay gold like we can up in heaven. God does it. Could you imagine running a machine that lays the streets in gold? Wouldn't that be cool? Mm -hmm. Is that golden too? Mm -hmm. I believe there's going to be motorcycles and hot rods and I'm just believing, Lord, I hope you'd let that all be up there. Stuff that I love. But the greatest thing that I love is I want to see him. Yes. 
Now think about it. The greatest thing that God's going to give you as a gift is Him. Yeah. In heaven, you get His time yeah. and His reward. The final reward is forevermore to be in His presence, yeah. spending it with Him. Yeah. I think that's kind of a win-win. There's very little that we have to do in, in the process. We, all we have to do is follow Him. We get a life abundantly when we do. Yeah. Right? We didn't start living until we found Jesus. Yeah. And once we found Jesus, then we found out life, we can not only, not only have life, but life abundantly. We can have joy in the times of sorrow. We can have peace in the times of turmoil. We can have finances in the times of leanness. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Nobody's ever tightened their belt up a little bit. Come on, we all have, right? No, been There's been lean times. I've, I've heard many stories of people in this church where they're so thankful that God brought them some, through some of the most <laughs> cleanest times in their life. Yeah. <clears throat> and they can look back now and see God in His hand in the whole thing. Yeah. But when you're in the situation, you don't always see God's hand in the thing, right? See, hindsight's 20-20. Yeah. means it's very clear what God's doing. But see, I have a unique thing that God's been showing Marcy and I. He's showing his hand in the process. But it's not unique because I'm able to open my eyes and see what he's trying to do. Yeah. I'm accepting to it instead of rejecting it at the time. I'm open to God, what are you doing? And I thank you for whatever you're doing. God, I thank you for that I had one more day with my wife. Or I thank you that I, I was able to show love to that person. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what, I was really mad this week. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I was fleshful. I got angry about something. I didn't chew them out. I was very, Marcy was very proud of me. I, I only like one coffee drink, and it's not even coffee. It's a refresher at... Uh, Lord forgive me, Starbucks. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's called the Very Berry Hibiscus. I love that, right? It's the only thing I like. I don't like coffee. I don't like any of that junk, right? It's the only drink I like. I go in and I say, I want a Trenta. How I many you know that's the biggest one? Very Berry Hibiscus is like this big. Light water, light ice, extra berries. That's how I like it. This girl was another girl that was doing my order. And she put a little bit of the very, very, the whatever they do, and then she started filling it with water, and filling it, and then she put it over on the counter, and I'm like, huh? And then she put the berries in, and then goes back and fills it up with more water. And then she puts a whole bunch of ice in there. And I said, uh, excuse me, ma'am. That's supposed to be light ice, light water, extra berries. It is light water. Like, you just put more water in it. I'm sorry. Boom! Threw the stuff away. Slam, 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 slam. Started making new ones. <laughs> then she made it horrible. The other way. And Marcy and I were sitting there and I said, I'm sorry, honey, I'm, I'm really mad. She goes, you should be. You paid for that. You should get it the way you like it. And I said, but it's not. I didn't blow up at her. I just talked to my wife in the car. I, I was like, I mean, I'm trying to be very calm, but my flesh part was really trying to, how many of you know you get that moment where your flesh part really wants to come out? Oh, yeah. Like a roaring lion? Yep. And I had to ask for forgiveness for that. Even though I didn't erupt. But I allowed it to get to that point. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's not good either. Not good. Prayer life helps change that. It does. That doesn't mean it's perfect all the time. I'm not perfect. But we're going to have to finish this next one. So part three. How many you know prayer is important? Prayer is prayer. important. Mm -hmm. And you heard some stories, but I want you to understand it's not about me. It's about the prayer that comes with that and the answers that I, we get yeah. aren't always coinciding. Yeah. God, I want you to have, I want a new car. Maybe he gives you a new truck. Or maybe he says, no, you got that one, we'll just fix it up. Mm -hmm. Or death, or 
<laughs> or he gives you a used car and has you drive that instead. I don't want that. But it's free and clear. Why don't you want it? Shut up and take the gift, right? That's you right. know, father's like, I was going to buy my son a car. Had the cash ready to pay for it. He absolutely said, I will not drive it if you buy it. I'm like, Cameron, it's all I can afford right now. It's a nice car. It runs great. And he said, nope, I won't drive it. It'll just sit there. I wanted to beat that spoiled brat. <laughs> I was like, that's all I can afford. Cameron's got two cars, and the most he ever paid for total with the two cars was $750 for those cars, total. And they were all the cars that he wanted. So I had to learn patience. And God opened the doors. How many know that's important when God opens the doors? Yeah. He opens doors that no man can open, and he shuts door that, doors that no man can shut. But it doesn't happen without prayer. How many know that prayer is important, right? That's right. Prayer is key to a life of victory. Yeah. Prayer is a key to a life of victory. See, we go from defeat, defeat, defeat. How many know that's easy to do, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so easy to do. Just line out the defeat. Satan's like, hash it out. Go for it. Look at that defeat. Look at that. Well, look at that. No, look at that. But God's saying, look at the victory there. And 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 my hand was in all of that. Yeah. And as a result of your prayer life, to help bring that around. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Amen. But you're like, Pastor, but I don't see that. Maybe you need a better prayer life. Yeah. But I'm praying for you guys, and let's pray right now. Father, we come to you. Lord, challenge us to have a better prayer life. Yes. Challenge us to be persistent in our pursuit of you and what you want. Father, I pray for those that are at home who are going to be watching this. I pray that your hand would be upon them in a mighty way. And on those that are here, Lord, we ask that you would do a, a quick recovery of healing for Carolyn, Lord. She's in a lot of pain. Yes. Lord, she's asking that I would put her kids and her grandchild on the prayer list to, yes. Lord, may your hand be on their lives. We ask that you would heal their bodies as well. Lord, we thank you that you are so faithful to your word that whatsoever we ask in your name, it shall be done. Bring us back safely next week, Lord. Be with those that are traveling. Bring them home safe. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you, and I love you. We'll see you next week.